Welcome back to another Mr. Oduit tutorial. If you have just been watching these videos up until now and have not actually been following along on your own computer writing the code, consider going back and doing it. You will learn more by pausing the videos and actually practicing writing the code as you go along. If you are a Mr. Oduit member, make sure you also are taking advantage of both the skill tests and the lesson tests in the members only area. They are purposely designed to help you better understand the information covered in these tutorials and to make you a better programmer. And of course, if you aren't a Mr. Autoit member, you can always head over to MrAutoit.com and sign up for a free account. Alright, let's continue adding on to the script we were working on in the last lesson. Start by adding these two new functions to your script exactly like I'm doing here. As you can see, I have added two new functions to the end of our script. The first function I added was the sleep function. The sleep function will pause your script for however many milliseconds you want. In this case, I set its parameters to 3000, which is telling the sleep function to pause the script for 3000 milliseconds or 3 seconds before continuing on. I use the sleep function to pause the script for 3 seconds because we want to give the user time to read the text we sent to Notepad before moving on to the next function. The second function I added is the when close function. This function will close a program's window just like if you were to close it with your mouse. The when close function's first parameter is the title parameter just like the when wait active function we are already using. If we didn't already know the title of the notepad window, we could have used the auto at window info tool to get it. However, because we have already used the window title in the when wait active function, we can just copy it and add it to our when close function. So now that we have added two new functions to our code, when we run the script and click yes, it should start notepad, wait for the notepad window to be active, send our text to notepad, wait three seconds so we can read the text, and finally it should attempt to close notepad. Let's go ahead and run it now to see if it works. Our script works, but we have ran into a potential problem. Because we have made changes to Notepad by sending text to it, Notepad wants to know if we'd like to save our changes when we try to close the Notepad window. This works exactly the same as if we were to try to close the Notepad window using the mouse. Let's test if the window would close if we didn't make any changes to Notepad. We can do that by going back to our send function and commenting it out using a semicolon. Remember, anything after a semicolon will be ignored by our script. So, if we run our script now, it should run just as before, but this time the script won't send any text to Notepad because we have commented out our send function. We can now run our script again and see what happens. As expected, the script ran, but this time 
it didn't send any text. It also closed the window without prompting us to save the changes. It didn't prompt us to save the changes because our script didn't make any changes to Notepad. Now that we have a better understanding about what's going on with Notepad, go back to our script and remove the commenting from the send function. Then run our script again. Let's assume for this automation example, we want to start Notepad, send text to Notepad, then close Notepad. If we want to do that using the when close function, then we need to add some extra lines of code to our script to select the do not save option when Notepad asks us if we'd like to save our changes. The first thing we want to do is add a new when wait active function to our script. This when wait active function will wait for the window to come up that asks us if we would like to save the changes we have made. As you may remember though, we need to tell the when wait active function what window we are waiting for by adding the window's title to the first parameter. We can do that by using the auto it window info tool to get the title of the window. We will use the info tool to get the second window's title exactly the same way as we did when we got the first notepad window title. Next, let's look closely at the Don't Save button. You may notice that the N is underlined in the word Don't. If the N is not underlined, try pressing the Alt key on your keyboard. In many Windows applications, if a letter is underlined in a control's text, then you can press the Alt key plus the letter to select that control. Let's see if this is true for Notepad. Press Alt-N on your keyboard to see if it will close Notepad without saving it. Sure enough, it appears that if we can use the Send function to send an Alt-N to the window, it will close Notepad for us. Go ahead and start by adding a Send to the end of our script. Now we need to determine how we can simulate pressing Alt-N on our keyboard. We can do that by looking up the send function in the help file. Remember, we can easily look up a function in the help file by selecting the function and then pressing F1. From the help file, scroll down to the section labeled Remarks. The help file has a lot of useful information that will tell you how to send different kinds of key combinations with the send function. It's not a bad idea to take a little time to read through the help file and familiarize yourself with some of the different options. For now though, we are just concerned with this section here in the remarks that says that using the explanation mark will tell AutoIt to send the ALT key and that using the explanation mark plus a letter is equivalent to holding down the ALT key and pressing that letter. So we know that if we add a explanation mark and then the letter N to our send function then it should simulate pressing the ALT N. Let's go ahead and test it out by adding it to our send function.
Finally, let's run the script to see if it works. Once again, our code is running smoothly. Now that we know that our script is running the way we want it to, let's go ahead and compile our script into an executable file. This will allow us to run the script without using the editor and on other computers that don't have AutoIt installed on it. We can compile our script from the editor by selecting Tools from the menu and then Compile. This will open up the compile window that is used to compile scripts. There are a lot of different options you can use for compiling your script. However, if you just use the default settings, the compiler will make an executable file with the same name as your script except with a .exe extension. It will also save the new executable file in the same folder as the script file. Let's go ahead and compile our script now by clicking on the Compile Script button. When the script is done compiling, go to the folder that your compiled script was saved to. From there, double click on the compiled script to run it and make sure that it works. We now have a script that automates Notepad for us and can be ran on other computers that don't have AutoIt installed on them. In the next lessons and tutorials, we will build on what you have already learned so that you can use AutoIt to automate almost any task that can be done on a computer. We try to add a minimum of at least one new AutoIt tutorial a week. So if you would like to continue to get new AutoIt updates and tutorials, please like and subscribe. Also, if you are not already a member of Mr. AutoIt, go ahead and head over to MrAutoIt.com and get a free account. If there is an AutoIt tutorial you would like to see, let us know and we just might make it for you. Alternatively, if you would just like to have something programmed for you, we do that too. Just head over to MrAutoIt.com and submit the job details to get a free bid. We can usually have a bid for you within 48 hours. This is Herb, aka Mr. AutoIt, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.